Afternoon tea by Robert William Service. As I was saying, no thank you. I never take cream with my tea. Cows weren't allowed in the trenches, got out of the habit, you see. As I was saying, our colonel leapt up like a youngster of ten. Come on lads, he shouts and we'll show em. And he sprang to the head of the men. Then some bally thing seemed to trip him, and he fell on his face. With a slam-o, he died like a true British soldier, and the last word he uttered was damn. And hang it. I loved the old fellow, and something just burst in my brain, and I cared no more for the bullets than I would for a shower of rain. Twas an awfully funny sensation, I say, this is jolly nice tea. I felt as if something had broken. By gad, I was suddenly free. Free for a glorified moment, beyond regulations and laws, free just to wallow in slaughter, as the chap of the Stone Age was. So on I went joyously nursing, a berserker rage of my own, and though all my chaps were behind me, feeling most fright fly alone. With the bullets, and shells ding-donging, and the crock, and the swish of the shrap, and I found myself humming Ben Bolt, will you pass me the sugar, old chap? Two lumps, please. What was I saying? Oh yes the jolly old dash. We simply ripped through the barrage, and on with a roar, and a crash. My fellows, old Nick couldn't stop em. On on they went with a yell, till they tripped on the botches sandbags, nothing much left to tell. A trench so tattered and battered that even the rat couldn't live. Some corpses tangled and mangled, wire you could pass through a sieve. The jolly old guns had built us, cheated us out of our show, and my fellows were simply yearning for a red mix-up with the foe. So I shouted to them to follow, and on we went roaring again, battle-tuned and exultant, on in the leaden rain. Then all at once a machine gun barks, from a bit of a bank, and our major roars, in a fury. We've got to take it, on flank. He was running like fire, to lead us, when down like a stone he comes, as full of typewriter, bullets as a pudding is full of plums. So I took his job, and we got em, by gad. We got em like rats. Down in a deep shell crater we fought like Kilkenny cats. Twas pleasant, just for a moment to be sheltered, and out of range, with someone you saw to go for, it made an agreeable change. And the botches that missed my bullets, my chaps gave a bayonet jolt, and all the time, I remember I whistled, and hummed Ben Bolt. Well, that little job was over, so hell for leather we ran, on to the second line trenches, that's where the fun began. For though we had strafed em like fury, there still were some botches about, and my fellows, teeth set and eyes glaring, like terriers rooted em out. Then I stumbled on one of their dugouts, and I shouted, Is anyone there? And a voice, Yes one, but I'm wounded, came faint up the narrow stair, and my man was descending before me, when sudden a cry, a shot, I say, this cake is delicious. You make it yourself, do you not? My men, oh they killed the poor devil, for if there was one, there was ten. So after I'd bombed them sufficient I went down at the head of my men, and four tried to sneak from a bunk hole, but we cornered the rotters all right. I'd rather not go into details, twas messy that bit of the fight, but all of it's beastly messy. Let's talk of pleasanter things. The skirts that the girls are wearing, ridiculous fluffy things, so short that they show, oh hang it. Well if I must, I must. We cleaned out the second trench line, bomb and bayonet thrust. And on we went to the third one, quite calloused to crumping by now. And some of our fellows, who'd passed us were making a deuce of row. And my chaps, well I just couldn't hold em. It's strange how it is with gore. In some ways it's just like whiskey. If you taste it you must have more. Their eyes were like beacons of battle. By gad sir. They couldn't be calmed, so I headed em bang for the bomb belt, racing like Billy be damned. Oh it didn't take long to arrive there, those who arrived at all. 
The machine guns were certainly chronic, the shindy enough to apple. Oh yes I omitted to tell you, I'd wounds on the chest, and the head, and my shirt was torn to a gun rag, and my face blood gummy, and red. I'm thinking I looked like a madman. I fancy I felt one too, half naked and swinging a rifle, God. What a glorious do. As I sit here in old Piccadilly, sipping my afternoon tea, I see a blind, bullet-chipped devil, and it's hard to believe that it's me. I see a wild, war-damaged demon, smashing out left and right, and humming Ben Bolt, rather loudly, and hugely enjoying the fight. And as for my men, may God bless em. I've loved em ever since then. They fought like the shining angels. They're the Pico, the land, my men. And the trench was a reeking shambles, not a botch to be seen alive, so I thought. But on rounding a traverse I came on a covey of five. And four of em threw up their flippers, but the fifth chap, a sergeant, was game, and though I'd a bomb and revolver he came at me just the same. A sporty thing, that I tell you. I just couldn't blow him to hell so I swung to the point of his jawbone, and down like a ninepin he fell. And then when I'd brought him to reason, he wasn't half bad, that hun. He bandaged my head and my short rib, as well as the doc could have done. So back I went with my botches, as gay as a two-year-old colt, and it suddenly struck me as rummy, I still was a humming Ben Bolt. And now, by Jove, how I've bored you. You've just let me babble away. Let's talk of the things that matter, your car or the newest play, 